the soul that he clipped off a piece of the fabric are y'all with me now uh, this is Terry Henry speaking not by the spirit but if I know you hated me and I know you despise me if I got that close to you mm, I'm not gonna waste time cutting fabric JD I hear somebody say well, he's the preacher he will not say that I'm just talking real talk are y'all with me? I wouldn't be cutting fabric. I'd be going deeper than fabric. All this time you've been chasing me, all this time you've been my enemy. You put stumbling blocks on my pathway and now I'm close to you. I'm not cutting cloth. Oh, I see somebody just shut down on me. Pastor Henry is in self now. Sometimes we gotta go to self in order to realize that's why we need the spirit. Because the spirit overrides self. Y'all don't hear me. Some of you in here have also wanted to. Mm. But the Lord put brakes on you. Anybody ever been there? But the Lord told you to shut it down. Touch not mine anointed. That's where he had a chance. To take Saul out but the Lord wouldn't let him do it so let's use the process of elimination it's not in Getty nope it's not in Getty Elder Jones the other one the only one left is a cave called a doolum help me somebody it was there that we found David in a low place are y'all with me in distress Deaconess Bradley uh, at the bottom he's hurt he's disappointed Amy he's running from his arch rival he's being chased from the countryside one to another and if it had not been for the Lord intervening through Saul's son Jonathan there were times that Jonathan said to David my daddy is fast approaching you better go ahead and run and get ahead of him. I feel a praise break right here because you ought to thank God for the Jonathans in your life. You ought to thank God for those persons who have your back, those persons that are prayer warriors for you, those persons that are tell you run, hide, trouble is coming. David was there hiding in a cave Aaron called Adula. And then something happened. And certainly when I get to heaven, I've told you before, Deacon S. Holmes, I've got a long list of things I want to ask God. But topping this next verse makes me want to knock on the door and say, God, we need to talk. The Bible says, are y'all with me? David left Gath, escaped to the cave of Adullam. This is 1 Samuel chapter 22. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to David. Listen, Deacon Poe, all those who were in distress, in debt, discontented, gathered around him and he became their commander. Deacon Carlton, 400 soldiers bombarded David. I need some help. Y'all need to help me preach this. Because Elder Robinson, I'm having trouble understanding how God allows us to be bombarded with folk who need help when we need help ourselves. Y'all didn't hear that? Somebody sitting there too sanctified to admit you've been there. The Bible says that they were upset, they would stress out, they were in debt, they were discontented, but they went to David. Why is it that God wants us to minister when we need to be ministered to? Why is it that God keeps folk coming to us when our cup is empty? You can't put out of an empty cup. What's up with God? that he would allow 400 soldiers and a crowd of folk to come 
seeking help from David. David needed help. David was crying out to God. David was petitioning God to help him. Pastor, you've lost your mind. No, I haven't. They were in distress. In debt. Uh-oh, y'all hear? In debt. They came to David, the king, looking for resources. You ever had anybody that want to borrow from you? I don't have but two dollars. And I'm trying to make it to my next paycheck. I don't have enough gas to make it through this week. And you want some of my two dollars? How is it that God expects us to be a blessing to somebody else when we're already in a low place? Credit cards maxed out in the store. Praying after you slide the car. Lord, don't let it be declined. And when you see that message approved, yes! And then you got Deacon Fullwood. Pastor, here I will. Let, let me hold something under next week. Brother, my cards almost maxed out. I'm at the bottom of the barrel myself. And yet God lays it upon your heart to help somebody when you need help yourself. Anybody ever been there? Maybe God is trying to put you to the source. The king to David. Read it when you get home. They were distressed, in debt, and discontented. But they were looking for help from David. Y'all said, Pastor, we've got that. Y'all to move on. Vaughn, I'm trying to move. But somebody's there this morning. Talk to me, somebody. The Bible says that they were in distress. And David was in distress himself. But God somehow allows us to be faced with other persons who are in the same dilemma that we are in. And yet he expects us to point them in the right direction expects us to be a blessing they kept coming looking for help from David they kept coming somebody's been there you're struggling trying to hold it together family friends are y'all with me co-workers are y'all with me always wanting to chat with you about their marriage and the truth is you're hanging on by a thread in your own marriage. I wish I had somebody to talk to me. In a dilemma. But yet others are coming. To you. You ever wanted to tell some folk? Y'all won't do it. Mm -mm. Don't even come my way. I'm matched out. Filled with anxiety, got a whole lot of stuff going on in my own life, and here you come. I hate to even see you coming, because I know when I see you coming, you want something. You want to pull something from me that I really don't have myself. God knows I wish I had somebody to talk to me. Anybody ever had family members hitting you up? Girl, I need you to say a for me. I really want to tell them I need you to say a prayer for me. My back is against the wall. I'm in a dilemma. And yet God expects us to pull out, to minister. When I got a song that I can't sing, got a prayer that I can't utter, I'm there. Y'all with me? 
This was David. Look at the text. He says, I look to the right, for there is no one who regards me. Mm. And everybody else wants you to sing the happy song. And you're trying to find a way to sing it to yourself. David said, no one cares for my soul. He's talking about total abandonment. Get ready. Uh, well, we got to finish the program. Rejection. Isolation. Hunted by soul. Y'all are taking this thing lightly. That's how we do when we look at this trouble in everybody else's life. We take their situations lightly. But I tell you, when the ball is in your court and you got to deal with life, the hand that you've been dealt, you will say like David said, nobody cares for me. Abandonment. Rejection. Isolation. And yet others keep coming. Help me somebody. And I'm going to say something that you may tell me later. Pastor, I don't think you'd have said it. should have said that. Just text me after tomorrow. He was depressed. As a church, as African Americans in particular, we don't want to admit where we are. Depressed. Anybody ever been depressed? I want to get up, but I don't know how. Trying to shake this thing. But I can't. Winston Churchill talked about a black dog that followed him everywhere he went. There was no physical black dog. He was dealing with depression. David says in verse 6, I am brought very low. Uh-oh. It means he was emotionally drained. In need of somebody to help him with his mental health situation. Are y'all with me? I'm not going because I can handle this myself. But in the meantime, you keep sinking. I don't need to talk to nobody. I don't need to sit on anybody's couch. I can get up when I want to get up. Well, if you can get up when you want to get up, why haven't you already gotten up? Because the enemy is trying to tell you that you can do it on your own. Talk to me, somebody. Depressed. Don't even feel like putting clothes on. Somebody's been there. Don't even feel like taking a shower. Just walk around all day in your pajamas. Shut the door. Silence the cell phone. I don't want to talk to nobody. Help me somebody. I don't want to deal with folk today. I've got my own stuff. He's in a low place. And I know some of you Christians are saying, how can a man of God, who was a man after God's own heart, get in a low place? Where was his timbrel? Where was his harp? Where, where were his musical instruments? Can I talk to somebody and tell you even those of us who labor before the Lord, even those who sing in the choir, who lead songs, who lead praise and worship, find ourselves in the dilemma every now and then. Can I get somebody to help me? Pastor, give us an example. Psalm 173. ASAP, the music director, said for my feet, almost slipped. I almost went down until I went into the presence of God. I need to pull right here and ask somebody, does anybody know what it looks like to go into the presence of God? Anybody know what it looks like to steal away in your secret closet? Stand there until you come out in power. Stand there until you come out and believe that everything is going to be all right. Pastor Henry, where you going? David said, deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. David admitted that he was no man to stand as an opponent to Saul. Are y'all with me? He knew in his own mind that he would be defeated if it were not for the power of God. But then the walls are closing. 
David says, I am in prison. Deacon Brian, that's the verse that a lot of us would never admit as to where we are. I am in prison and there is no way out. I'm not talking about central prison in Raleigh or 25 across the railroad tracks. David is vexed. He said, my spirit is in prison. And I don't know how in the world I'm going to get out of this situation. Jessica Reedy said, but in your pain, there lies a blessing, a sweeter song of victory. Life can leave you bitter, bitter. But I believe things are going to get better. Are y'all with me? And then David said, I cry with a loud voice. I pour out my complaint before God. I declare my trouble under him. My spirit is overwhelmed. Verse 3, verse 5, again, I cried out to the Lord. You are my refuge, my portion, and in the land of living. Are y'all with me? But then David, hallelujah, 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 reaches a point where he says, set me free from my prison that I may praise your name. Can I get a witness? In other words, David is saying, I came in broken, disappointed, weary, troubled, and vexed. But by the time I come out of here, I'm going to be praising your need. No matter what the devil's trying to do in your life, don't let that rascal cause you to lose your place, lose your joy lose your testimony I'm in a cave but I'm coming out because the Lord is gonna bring me out he's gonna set me free from this prison that I'm in that I may praise your knee my God I wish I had somebody that came in in a cave but thank God for his word that I'm leaving out on a praise note bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me oh magnify the lord with me and let us praise his name i will bless the lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth is there anybody here got a praise on a Sunday morning, the devil has surrounded you. The devil has put you down. But I dare you to tell somebody, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out with joy down in my soul. I'm coming out with a hallelujah and a thank you, Jesus. Don't judge me by the way I look. Because to tell you the truth, I don't look like what I've been through. That's your testimony. You've been to hell and back. But you can tell somebody, the Lord lifted me. Has he lifted you? Is there anybody in here can tell somebody, he's talking to me. I've been there. I can wear the t-shirt. But can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. David was in a cave called Abdullah. He cried out unto the Lord. He's transparent and admits I'm in a low place. I'm at my wit's end. I'm almost on the edge suicidal thoughts depression 
And in the midst of all of this, folk are coming to me. Asking me to minister to them. Folk are coming to me. Asking me to be a financial blessing. And I've already received my cutoff notice. How does God expect me to minister when my cup is almost empty? But yet God allows us to muster up. And sometimes in the midst of ministering to others, we find a solution to our own stuff. Anybody ever been ministering to somebody else, pouring into them and they're, oh! I just told them what to do and what I told them is really what I need to do. What's up with this God? allows us to go into caves called a doula. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Jessica read it. She said, I got a song to sing, but I can't sing it. Heartbeat, Dante, an organ that can be played that's not being played. <laughs> You'll get that later. heart is supposed to beat a song should be sung but I can't find it trying to get your arm up trying to say thank you Jesus but your burdens have your arm weighted down Praise right here, but it won't come out of my mouth because I'm perplexed, beat down, burden. But David leaned on the Lord, Sonyan, in the midst of his despair, he realized, I know where my help. <laughs> comes from he reaches out to God he just tells God I want to be able to praise your name I want others to see me praise your name so that they can gain victory over their situation because the praise they see in me as we all stand this morning Jesus all of my burdens I cannot bear these burdens alone Jesus can help me Jesus alone don't leave you're gonna miss it somebody's there someone's there I heard God just say there's a young person that's there the pastor they're gone and they are in another place but you are here or else the spirit wouldn't have said it pastor's taking every bit of energy in me to stand on my feet because I'm so weighted down ministers will meet you pray with you and pray for you in the meantime the doors of the church are open as our deacons make their way to the altar you may come by letter candidate for baptism or this morning you may come on Christian experience and I hope you notice what's going on in the screen so many of you have said I'm interested in joining but Pastor Henry didn't say it always know you can come to the altar. You can join the church at any time, whether the call is made or not. Pastor Henry, I don't know how you knew it, but the sermon was for me today. That's why the Spirit prompted you to go ahead and get things started. 
because I'm in my own cave. Would you come? There may only be one person, and I'm fine with that as long as you're obedient to the Spirit. I'm in that low place. My burdens are heavy. My tribulations are great. Why, if you would just sing that lowly, I would appreciate it. I must tell you. mind let those young folk All the life is take the front my way, I can't it takes a lot of energy and nerve to come as young people Some preachers and pastors may tell you Pastor Henry is incorrect about that, and I'm fine. I'm going to stand my own. God does not require you to be a super saint every day. Sometimes you just got to say, Help! 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 I feel myself going down. Come to unite with Macedonia, Deacon Paul, Deacon Austin, and Deacon Hopper are standing at the altar. Many of you may notice that the Mitchells are absent this morning. I did not make this publicly known, 
the deacons and deaconess are aware Deacon Mitchell was hospitalized this week but thank God he's home and recuperating as I sent to him in a group text I pray that this will not even be something that will leave a lasting effect on his body but he'll remember what happened <laughs> But his testimony would be greater than his problem. David admitted where he was. David admitted his brokenness. David admitted that he was too weak to deal with everybody else's situation. We're preparing to pray. A few years ago, I was invited, my second invitation, to the president of Liberia's home. If you Google his name, it's Joseph, the Honorable Joseph Borkai. I was invited to come to his home, along with Reverend Blay, who was then the vice president of the seminary. And what baffled me was when I arrived on the campus with all that security of his home, not his over office, not his office, but his home. Pastor Mar said, there was a line two miles long. People waiting to talk to the Honorable Joseph Booker. And so we were able to bypass security. We had an appointment. He wanted to give me his autograph book that is in my office and thank me for my work in Liberia. When I finally got inside, you know me, I asked him, Your Honor, how in the world do you do this all day long? He admitted that some days life gets heavy. But I do the best I can. Folk coming for different organizations, individuals begging for rice. Rice at that time was $40, uh, about 20 US dollars for a 40 pound bag of rice. And some of y'all may say, Reverend Henry, that's, that's, that, that's not a whole lot. It is when rice is the only thing you've got to eat. But Elder Jones, he says something to me, and it's in his book. He said, God gives me the strength that when I'm weak, he makes me strong. So God, when I'm weak, when I don't have left anything left to pour, I'm depending on you make me strong. Elder Dean is coming now to lead us to that rock. Yeah! That is higher than we are. Anybody here know there's help in the name of Jesus. There's help on the way. Lord, we just thank you this morning. God, we give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. We thank you so much that we know help is in the name of the Lord. We thank you and we magnify you on this morning. God, we know it's you that lifted us up out of that bed and brought us here on today. God, we thank you that in diverse time, Lord Jesus, when it seems so dark out there, God, we thank you for being the light. We thank you for being our strength. We thank you for being our very present help in the time of trouble. Dear God, we pray for the youth on today. We pray that you would touch and that you would penetrate their heart, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for they are the leaders of today. And we thank you for stirring them up. We thank you for giving them a burning fire within. Dear God, we thank you for the men and the women of God. We thank you for those that are pressing and pushing towards you. God, to get a closer walk to you on, on today, God. We thank you that you're going to feel them like you've never filled them before. We thank you, oh God, for the leaders. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our first lady and how you are strengthening them, oh God. Sometimes they go through things that we don't even know. Sometimes they might put a smile on the face and they're hurting on the inside. But today, oh God, today, I pray that you would strengthen them, God, from the inside on out. We thank you, oh God, for your Holy Spirit. We know 
you, Lord Jesus, if we look unto you, you told us to look unto the hills from whence cometh our help, knowing that all of our help come from you. We thank you for being our help. We thank you for being our strong tower. God, you said in your word, oh, Father God, that you are a strong tower and the righteous run in and we are saved. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for shielding us. We thank you for molding us. We thank you for lifting us. We thank you for surrounding us. We thank you, oh God, for your presence. And God, we know that it's the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the blood today. We thank you, God. Oh God, how you strengthen us, God. How you walk with us, God. How you talk with us, God. How you lift us up. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Oh God, I pray that everyone in this house today, God, that you would look upon their own house, God, and that you would take care of every situation that's going on. We thank you right now, oh God, for victory, oh God. We know that victory is ours, and we're going to walk in the victory, oh God. You give us the victory because you are our strong banner. We thank you, oh God, and we pray that you would continue to bless us and lead us. And most of all, God, we thank you for the victory. We ask all of these blessings in Jesus Christ's name we pray on today. Amen. As you're returning to your seats, let us quickly prepare for offertory worship. Quickly, ushers, deacons. Quickly, quickly, quickly. While the deacons are getting the altar ready, let me say this very quickly, Macedonia, we are going to 3627 Dogwood Road in a few moments. Uh, Jimmy is driving over and we should be able to board the bus promptly at 1030. 1030, not 1031, not 1032. I just Googled it. It's going to take us, it's 12 miles, but it's going to take us 24 minutes to get there, going through Wilmington. If you've never been to uh, Cooper's Chapel, go to Leland, the second exit. Make that right, like you're heading to Deacon Ulysses Jenkins' house, and go down a few miles, and you'll see Dogwood Road, and the church is on the right. They've been preparing for a long time for the day. This is their 100th church anniversary. Castile Robbins, who worked with Miss Daniels and Miss West, is introducing me today. He called yesterday, Pastor, we are waiting on Macedonia. So we look forward to being with them. Our women's choir is going to sing. Um, again, the bus is ready. All you got to do is board the bus, come along with us, and as soon as service is over, I'm thinking the sermon this afternoon should be no longer than two hours, I promise. <laughs> and we'll be ready to dine sufficiently. They've killed the fatted calf just for us. And we look forward to worshiping with them this afternoon. Uh, our worship leader is going to take it from here as you stand and uh, come and worship by giving. Then afterwards, she will be able to give the benediction. Deacon and Reverend Bell, Reverend Bell and Deacon, we'll put you down another Sunday. Uh, I, I know y'all not worried about that, but we'll get back to you. And so that you can say you weren't welcome, welcome to Macedonia. <laughs>